episode 24. This is Ari. Welcome. In episode 22, I introduced to you a way of practicing scales that is not just going by whole steps and half steps in order of the scale, but breaks it down into intervals. And in that particular episode, I was breaking it down into thirds. That gives you great materials for runs and fills and solos, and it's great stuff to have under your fingers. And I called the episode Drills for Fills. Somebody asked in the comments, if I could give you some examples of how this material is being used in a chord progression, and I will be glad to address that in today's episode. I will do a very brief recap of episode 22, but I encourage you to watch it if you haven't seen it, because it comes with a PDF and goes into more detail as to what I'm about to do here, very condensed. Um, I'll be doing this in C major and the major scale, C major scale works like this. Now broken down in intervals of thirds, you get this. Uh, I call it two up, one down, like this, right? That's this pattern that pops out. Now you can take that pattern and start on top of the two notes rather than the bottom note, you get this. reversed accordingly when I descend. Now I can take those two and combine them. So I start with the first one from uh, that I did earlier and then I do the second one rather than I reverse the second two of the group. And then I continue that up the scale. And lastly I can turn that on its head and start on the other side of it. When you use this material in a chord progression, you want to make sure to pre-plan where in the measure you start with the fill or run. You want to make it so that you come out smoothly with the root when you're done with the run, and you also want to make sure that it sits in the measure in a way that makes musical sense. Step one is really to have these patterns under your fingers so that you're comfortable using them and are ready to uh, to get them going uh, from a technical standpoint. So I will be giving you a few examples and the chord progression that was requested was a 1-4-5 as well as a 2-5-1. In the first example, I'll be doing a diatonic connection, moving into the next chord by a step. I'll play it a little bit slower. I want to put to your attention how I'm going directly from the C chord to the F chord in the last beat of the measure. So the last beat is that figure. And the last two notes there are E to G to F. It's like they're enclosing, and this can be referred to as an enclosure, a diatonic enclosure, because it uses only notes out of C major. It sort of circles the target note, one below, one above target. In this example, I will start up here because then I don't have to shift so much. And the nucleus is this one, five, eight figure. Notice the rhythmic variations in this groove that shake it up a bit. And also the chromatic return to the root at the end of it.
The next example is built on a 2-5-1 chord progression. Now, again, the bass is moving in fourths, just like it was before from the C to the F, and now it's moving from D to G to C. But now we're having a minor chord involved. It's a D minor 7 going to a G7, and then the C major 7, so we um, have to adapt the notes in order to stay in the uh, diatonic field. And the groove has a groove nucleus for the first two beats that stays consistent and then uh, the fill is being applied on beat three and four of each measure. Um, the last two notes of each measure in the first and second bar employ a chromatic enclosure. So again, one from above, one from below, target that's uh, typically referred to as an enclosure and very much defines where we're going. So the effect of that is above, below, target, okay, in a chromatic fashion. And it does that again at the end of the second measure, we go to the C, and in the end, um, in the last measure, we're going chromatically back down to the root. So all of these are devices to uh, create a clear direction where we're going, a smooth transition into the next chord. And I'll play it to you first slower and then speed it up. Play the example again at tempo 95. In the last example, we're having another 2-5-1 chord progression and we're using chromatic approaches. You'll see a chromatic approach from below going into the G7 there in the second measure and a an, uh, chromatic approach from above going down to the root when we're returning back to the C in measure three. And at the end of measure three, we have another enclosure, one from above, chromatic, chromatic enclosure, one from above, one from below, target. And we can play this entire example in one position, don't need to do any shifts. and tempo 95. There you have it. Drills for fills applied over a couple of chord progressions. Hope you enjoyed this episode. I'm at arispaceblog.com. Thank you for watching.